feel, do I feel great about it? Am I recognized? So that's another line of thought. The next thing I want to talk about is something uh, very precious. Each of, and I'm talking of sales, uh, it's so precious to us that we like to keep it to ourselves. We don't even share it with our colleagues. And uh, it is so precious that we, we keep it locked, and we, but we don't know what to do with it. And that is four words called data. <laughs> yeah, we keep collecting it. And it's lying in, business cards are lying in our offices. Earlier they were albums, now we have you know, scanners. It's lying somewhere in our computers. But actually, how many of us actually use it? And whereas the world is going and saying, OK, now let's use big data. If you speak to online companies, uh, they have uh, PhDs employed to study data and to do all that uh, uh, customer segmentation and how to market to them. There are companies which have billion dollar valuation just on data. And at hotels, we are only collecting them at, at the moment. Uh, and I'm sure we'll do something about it one day. So question to Mike. Of all the data that we collect, what can we do? Yeah, there, there's, there, there's so many things that we can do with the data. Uh, it, but you're absolutely right. So one of the things that we've done extremely well that's really not that valuable for us as an industry is we've captured all the data when someone's been unhappy with our hotel. So, so a lot of people would say, I'm going to capture data and you capture all the complaints, and then you don't do anything actionable with it. You don't change your behavior, you don't change uh, the root cause of the issue. So that's one thing that we as an industry have done well, is capture complaints, because you know when you talk to the customer service department, they know all the people that are complaining about the hotel. They keep track of them. But on the other hand, you have probably 95% of the rest of the data that if you look at, will tell you where are your guests coming from? How long are they staying? You know, you start to analyze that data, and you can tell at any given season of the year where your guests came from, and you can pre-market to that group before your season comes. You know how long they're going to stay. You know what types of food they purchase from the folio. You know what kind of excursions they go on. And you, you create packages, you create experiences that are tailored specifically to those guests that you want to draw to your property. You can also analyze the data and say, you know, we have a mix of business for guests that aren't willing to, to spend money in the restaurant, they aren't spending money in the bar, they're only taking the most discounted rates. Okay, why are we somehow inadvertently marketing to that group when we have this other group that we can identify with data, we know where they're coming from, we know what they want to do, why don't we market to those groups and then reinforce that experience? So, Mike, thank you very much. Theoretically, it's really nice to hear this. But actually, a lot of small and medium enterprises are also here. Forget small, medium. We are large companies. Also, we have data. We are still struggling what to do with them and how effectively to use it. But what about the small and medium enterprise? They are owner-driven companies. They are small travel companies. They, are, they have enough data. They have. When they take a visa, they take uh, six months of bank statements. So they exactly know how much money is there in your bank. And come to think of it, uh, talk about privacy laws. Uh, so they know exactly of last three years how much money you made because you, you submit your income tax return. So look at the data these guys must be sitting on. Now, the actual, you know, all of us understand this very precious. We have to do something about it. But what can smaller companies who are driven they don't have too many people, uh, Dhananjay, to you, how, what is the actionable step that you say to these guys of what you can do with it? So, so with the first step that they need to take, and, and I hear this from hoteliers all the time, is I capture all that data. I collect it. Uh, then you go to analyze it and you find out, well, I really don't capture it online. I don't capture it in anywhere it can be analyzed, but I have this file cabinet that's full of all these copies of folios. Right. Okay? You can't do anything with that. You, you need to get the system or the data into something that you can read. So for example, if, if you have maintained folio level detail from your property management system, 
you can export that all into an Excel spreadsheet and you need to make sure you capture accurate data at the time of check-in. Okay, so it does you no good to have all that data if they've keyed in the guest's name wrong, they don't bother to capture their contact information, where they're from, all that kind of, of, of data that is right there and a lot of people will just tab right past the data that really would be meaningful for you to take action. But let's assume that you capture the data. It's not that difficult, export it into a spreadsheet and do just some very rudimentary searches to say, you know, where, where did my guests come from? You know, how long okay. did they stay? There's very simple things that you can do to get started. Naranji, I'll just come to you. Uh, I want to ask the audience a question. How many of you actually collect data? Not too many of you collect data also. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how many actually use it effectively? You feel that I use my data 10 on 10 or 9 on 10. We'll ask you, sir, for a best practice. <laughs> 5 on 10? <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's the highest we've gone. We'll come back to it. Uh, Dhananjay, so my question is the same. What can small, medium enterprise, and you know, they have the wealth of data because they are interacting with the direct consumer, and then they get it to the hotel. We collect some part of it, but actually they're sitting on a huge repository of data. How can, as a hotel company, we do something so that it translates into business for all of us. So, uh, purely looking at the B2B space here with collection yeah. of data, yeah. what they have, which is their customers, I think we, uh, A, we, we need to be strong enough to get them use that database and leverage that into whatever activities or kind of in a hotel business to use them or an online business start using them. So B2B space is clearly a first step that we have the right as hoteliers have those database in place. So it's an association, it's a TAI, TAFI, OTOI, whatever it is. So from that, that database we can capture or we can build customer base for us. For example, we have launched SPG Pro and I, I don't mind, don't shy to say that, that we would leverage on O2I, uh, Mr. Sani is right here, to further get all those database, what they have, all their members, to further be part of the program. You'll pay them something for that data? No, we won't pay them. Oh, okay. No, just we'll leverage. the revenue model here. We partner with them, yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I see a business model here, yeah. uh, and I want to tell you this personal experience on data. So, uh, 15 years ago, I used to be uh, a director of, that was long ago, okay. So maybe 10 years ago, I was a director of sales of a hotel, and this young chap came to us uh, who had studied in America, and he came to us and he said he's a data analyst. We didn't know better. So he said, you know, uh, your data can talk to you and we were very circumspect, whatever, what do you want? He says, I want access to your property management system and I will give you a report uh, which will blow your mind. So firstly we said, oh, sorry, that's a sacred cow, we cannot give you any data. So he says, okay, give me just data of one restaurant. So he goes to our uh, server room he takes the entire data, we didn't even come to know, we realized it one year later that he's already taken it. Though our IT guy was right next to him and all that. So he comes back after a month and we have a meeting, including the food and beverage manager, and he says, so my first question is, who's your most loyal guest in this Chinese restaurant that you have? So obviously, the f and manager said, Mr. So-and-so. Okay, so how many times has he visited your hotel in the past one year? And he said, 30, he said, wrong answer, 73 times, okay? What does he normally order? So obviously the FNU manager called the restaurant manager to say, oh, sir, he orders vegetable noodles and vegetable Manchurian. He says, so the answer was, every third visit, he actually splurges and he orders X, Y, Z dishes. Now we were like blown away. And believe you me, we engaged with that company who used to give us a report every day. And that time, capture ratio. Capture ratio is a term of how many 
clients who stay in your hotel eat in your restaurant. So that time our capture ratio was 16%. Only 16% were eating a one major meal because there were a lot of standalone restaurants. Every morning, we used to get a list of these are the clients who are staying with you who potentially can buy a meal. So, so we did a promotion where we would leave a, a card on the, uh, uh, a deal card kind of thing on his pillow, which would say, if you dine today in the Indian restaurant, uh, uh, you know, two beers are free or something like that. Our capture ratio in six months time, based on this data analytics, went up to 68%. We couldn't imagine this thing could happen. Then we replicated it with uh, banquets. And uh, for those who know statistics, it's mean time between failures for machines. It's a statistical formula. So it would highlight to you that now's the time to call this client because he's ready to buy. Statistically proven that he has to book a function now. And it worked really well. So, uh, OK, I'll open this company on the side, and then you can, you know, we can, we can look at it. But, but uh, talking of data analytics, uh, Mr. Giri, considering uh, uh, everything is online, 90% in UK, uh, is there some work happening on data analytics or? Yeah, hell of a lot, in fact. Yeah. I mean, when you do that kind of uh, business, uh, I think it would be foolhardy to think that it's not happening. I think it's big time. I think we have a lot of analysts who really uh, accumulate this data and work on it. But uh, is it uh, very prevalent in India right now? The answer is no. But definitely in the UK, it's big time. Very big time. Yeah. OK. Uh, so what is, I'll, I'll lead to the last question of the session, and then we'll open the house. We'll start from Mamta. Uh, Mamta, if there is one thing that you'd like to communicate uh, to the travel industry which is here, what is one thing you would like domestic travel agents or outbound travel agents to change in the way they work with hotels for better business, what would that be? Okay, uh, I think the one thing that they should uh, change is that uh, they should have multiple channels of booking. Uh, so, you know, rather than just concentrating on either booking through an OTA or a DMC, uh, they should be open to uh, various...